So what is going on guys, Nando Prince 93 here with another video and today's gonna be a fun one because iPadOS 13.2 finally released to the public. So you don't need to be a beta developer, public or the one that you have to pay for it to get the early release. iPadOS 13.2 finally is out and it comes with a bunch of features that are actually noticeable finally. So we're gonna hop right into them. Some of these will be you know, applicable to iOS devices, so iPhones and iPod Touches if you guys are still using iPod Touches. Uh, so I'm just going to run through them and I'll let you know if they're like iPad specific ones or they're just overall iOS ones. So the first thing, obviously we're always going to touch modem software. So this one doesn't apply to me personally because I don't have a cellular version of the iPad, but I have noticed that on my iPhone itself, right? So quick little story, uh, I take the subway to work every morning. Obviously in the subway when you're actually moving, there is no service. but what I used to do before was I would turn on a YouTube video, start watching it, and each stop is about a minute and a half, two minutes away. So enough would load on the video to where I could watch. And then what I would do is I would turn on the airplane mode and then turn it back off airplane mode so it would search for service. And now I don't have to do that. So the modem is a lot quicker. So it recognizes when you're in a service range versus before where it would just say no service for a while. Like, a, like it would not, like it would not recalibrate itself quick enough to catch service again in between stops, and now it does. So if you guys are on a cellular version of your iPad and you use it on the subway or in, in places where you're in and out of service areas, it'll work a lot better when moving from Wi-Fi or moving from nothing to LTE data. So that's a big plus. I just wanted to share that with everybody. And now I'm gonna dive into the actual visual features of iPadOS 13.2. So a big one that people really, really wanted, I was never a user of it, but now Siri, but now Siri can read your messages to you out loud. So again, if you use iMessage on the iPad a lot very frequently or on your iPhone and you have your AirPods on or any uh, Apple headphone product, so any of the Beats, the Powerbeats Pro, the new AirPod Pros, which I did order and comment below if you guys wanna see a review on them or the regular old school AirPods, sad that they're now old school. Siri will read those iMessages to you and you can respond through dictation. So that's, that's a nice plus that a lot of people liked and I just thought it was useful. Another nice little addition is actually in the settings menu. So they now moved where the home screen and dock. So home screen and dock is their own menu now. So you can decide to keep it on the view screen permanently or not. Uh, you get multitasking options. So allow multiple apps, picture in picture, using gestures. So it's nice that they moved this to its own separate location in the settings app because again, it's an application that's only relevant to the iPad. So it should have its own settings application. Another big one, which I think Apple heard me directly on this one, right? So before when you wanted to uh, have options with your app, you had 3D touch. So you would like press firmly and a bunch of options would come out and you would be able to tell after playing with it for a while, whether you wanted to press hard and get those options or hold it down and get it into wiggle mode to be able to delete and move the apps around. So now what Apple did was if you have to touch it, like hold it down for a long time, you now have options. So first off, the main options are these three in the dock, these are apps that are most recently used. You can now hide them, so they go away. You can hold it down. If you don't want those showing, you hide them. Another thing that they added was if you hold it down, you can now press edit home screen. So you press there and it goes straight into wiggle mode. So it avoids that, you know, that learning curve that you need to like, hey, I have to hold it down for a certain amount of time to get haptic touch to react or hold it down even longer to get into wiggle mode. And also for third-party apps, obviously you can't delete the camera, but if you hold it down, you can now delete the app straight from this menu, which I'm not gonna do. So you don't even have to get into wiggle mode to delete the app. So that's another way that Apple is kind of learning from its users and finding out what works best for everybody and not having to put this giant learning curve on needing to use this iPad. Now there's a new volume HUD animation. So if you press it once, you see it, and then it kind of goes away in a new cool way. It's just, you know, a nice little touch on how it goes away. I've noticed that, I thought that was cool. But if we keep going, if you go into the settings app, and if you go under Siri and search, Siri now has a new menu called Siri, Siri and dictation history. So basically everything that you ask Siri or ask Siri to dictate will now be saved in within the iPad and within its neural chip. And now you can actually delete all, you can just press delete Siri dictation history and it gets rid of everything. So you know that Apple and nobody else has access to it. So that's a nice little privacy feature. And then again, again under the settings app, if you go to privacy and you go into analytics and improvement, there's a new section here called improved Siri and dictation. So basically what this means, this is up to you. I leave it on because at the end of the day, I want these products to be 
improved and work as easy as possible for me. So if you want, you can turn this option off, which means that whatever Siri takes in, it won't share with Apple. And I trust that Apple is keeping it internal and making it so their products are better and they're not selling it to everybody, which they say they don't, so I keep it on. And until otherwise mentioned, unless there's another Facebook debacle or a Facebook you know, information hack that happens to Apple, I'm fine with leaving this on, so that's up to you, but there's now you have that option, so that's always nice. Under general, you now have AirPlay and handoff. So I was actually noticing this today. So I have a Samsung TV, which overnight a couple months ago just updated and updated the, or like installed the Apple TV up on its own. So now I have AirPlay on my Samsung TV. And I noticed that every time I would turn on, like my TV would be on and I would turn on Netflix and start playing something on Netflix, it automatically connected to my TV and then it would start playing my Netflix stuff on my TV. So I have it on automatic right now. I'm gonna ask, put it to ask so it doesn't do it automatically because I'd be in the middle of a video game I'd turn on Netflix to put in the background on this and then would move my Netflix onto the TV and stop my video game. So that, I thought that was kind of funny. So basically it's called AirPlay, AirPlay handoff and it works really well, well with AirPods supposedly. I don't own an AirPod, never have, probably never will, but that's a feature that's been added so you guys know. Another cool one, it has something to do with organization, right? So if you go into you know Safari or whatever and you go to take a screenshot, right? and then you go to share it, you can now see that on the top, it now names the image based on where you are, right? So if I had like an ESPN website loaded up, it would say ESPN image. But if I press done here, delete that, if I'm just in the middle of a normal home screen and I take a screenshot and you try to share that one, it just gives you the, the date and time that that screenshot was taken because there's too much for it to kind of nail down and be like, hey, this is what you want to call it. So. That's a nice little feature and I'm sure as time goes on, it'll get better and better at learning where you are. So maybe at one point it'll just say like home screen image instead of just having the date and time. Another one that I did notice, right? So when you press these font buttons up here in Safari, this is what allows you to choose uh, to request a mobile desktop site or a regular site. And if you guys can see, it's now broken up. You see these little bars that's broken up into little sections. So that's new. I didn't know that was, uh, I don't know why they did that, but they just broke it up for us, I guess, to see a little bit better. And then two more uh, that are kind of nice. If you go into, I believe I still have it. You can now long press on content and you can add it to up next or you can share with people. So act, haptic touch has been added to Apple TV internally. And then the last thing, and the last thing is with the podcast app. So if you use Apple's native podcast app, which I don't, I use Spotify for all my podcasts because I'm in Spotify, I'm in that ecosystem, so why not just stick with it? I like it, it works for me. But the reason, or, or within Apple's podcast app, you can now search within that podcast. So let's say you're listening to an hour long podcast about Elon Musk or something. You can now search within that podcast, the word Elon Musk, and it'll pop up every single time Elon Musk was mentioned and you can kind of skip to that part of the podcast. So I thought that was nice. So if you're listening to a news podcast and your friend told you to listen to it, about, skip to the part where they talk about technology in America. So you just type in technology in America and it'll skip you right to the part of that podcast. So I thought that was really nice. You don't have to sit through a whole 90 minute podcast to listen to this five minute snippet. So those are the main features that I noticed. Obviously AirPlay, not AirPlay, obviously audio share is a big one, which I'm gonna really test out when I get the AirPod Pros that, that come in. And overall improvement. So like battery, I haven't been able to test too long. So I'll give you guys a follow. If you guys wanna see, I've seen people that do follow-up reviews to iOS or iPadOS updates. If you guys want, to, want me to make like a one week later of every time a new uh, software update comes out to let you guys know how, how it does a week later based on you know performance, battery, um, how big the files have gotten, things like that, I would be more than happy to. But for now, that's it. Those are all the new changes. Everything, mostly stability improvements and some nice tweaks and enhancements to the overall workflow. For like my favorite aspect of this was how they changed up the home screen, like being able to, to distinguish between wiggle, wiggle mode and haptic touch and all those things and making it easier for me to organize my stuff. So again, that's gonna do for the video. Hopefully you guys, you, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Again, I'm gonna get the AirPods, the AirPod Pros. I don't know if it's AirPods Pro or AirPod Pros. I'm gonna get that hopefully on Thursday, do a nice little review for you guys. I'm gonna do an unboxing and initial impressions. I'm gonna compare it to the original original AirPods to see if it's worth upgrading or not in a few more videos that I have ready to go. But that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. You guys are awesome. Until next time, peace.